I know usually during our post-game shows, we go over what happened in the football game, and we're going to do that on today's 49ers report, but I don't even want to look at stats for this football game because the Niners play tells a story, and what has happened over the last three weeks for this football team after a 5-0 and start, after beating the Dallas Cowboys 42-10, to is embarrassing. And I said this last week after San Francisco lost on Monday Night Football in ugly fashion to the Minnesota Vikings, and I don't know how you can argue this point. The San Francisco 49ers are a fraudulent football team. The San Francisco 49ers are frauds, and they are front-running frauds. During that 5-0 start, everything went beautifully for San Francisco. They put up more than 30 points in every single football game. They played from ahead, and they looked really comfortable in doing so. And during that five-game winning streak to start the season, San Francisco looked like the best, deepest, most talented, and most dominant football team in this league. But since that point, San Francisco in three straight games, and it all started during that gloomy game against the Cleveland Browns in which San Francisco was trying to fight the Browns before that game. They got punched in the mouth in that game. They got kicked in the teeth against the Minnesota Vikings. And then today, returning home to Levi Stadium after two consecutive road games going into the bye, Fred Warner called this ball game a must win for San Francisco. They were once again punched in the face and they did not respond. The San Francisco 49ers right now are a football team that when they face adversity, when they face tough times, they crumble, they show and display that they are mentally weak, and they wilt. Now you can look at all these numbers all you want. 419 yards of total offense, Brock Purdy, 21 of 30, 306 yards. They ran 23 times for 113 Here's the big one right here. And this has been a constant theme over the last couple of weeks. Championship level teams do not drop three games in a row. They do not play down to the level of their opponent. They do not play sloppy. They do not give up third down after third down after third down. They do not wilt on some money downs. They do not miss tackles. And for a defensive line that $100 is invested toward, they can't generate a pass rush outside of two Eric Armstead sacks today. And the San Francisco 49ers being a soft team, that is a reflection of the head coach in Kyle Shanahan. I'm a fan of Shanahan. Three NFC Championship games over the last four years. He's a very innovative play caller and play designer. But when things are going right, this offense moving downhill looks unstoppable. When they have to come from behind, everything is hard. Now, it's not all on Kyle Shanahan. Brock Purdy's two interceptions, awful throws. He looked like the Iowa State Brock Purdy, who had some great moments, but would throw some head-scratching interceptions. But when the head coach carries himself the way that he does, and he throws the defensive coordinator under the bus like he did this past week with Steve Wilkes, and when he's pouting on the sideline like a sore loser and a petulant child, that rubs off on the rest of the team. And Kyle Shanahan said this past offseason, he read some self-reflection books to help himself moving forward as a head coach, and on the bright side, I know that San Francisco last year started 3-4, and They won 13 games total and finished the season on a tremendous winning streak. The year before that, they started 3-5. and They turned it around. They won 10 games, and they ended up making the NFL playoffs. The season is not over for San Francisco. They're 5-3, and but when you go into the bye week with three straight L's, all of them very ugly, there's a dark cloud hovering over this organization right now. And hopefully those two weeks can motivate this team. But when they come out of the bye week, they have to take on a very good Jacksonville Jaguars team that has a good coach in Doug Peterson, a good quarterback in Trevor Lawrence. They have to fly all the way across the country and play in that 1 o'clock Eastern window. That is not going to be an easy game. 
and the Niners here are in danger of falling to 5-4. and four. They've already lost their grasp of the NFC West. The Seattle Seahawks are now leading this division. And what did I say this past week and after that Minnesota game? If the Niners show up like they have the last three weeks, they will get their asses handed them by Seattle, who they are a mentally tough and physical team, and they will take no prisoners when they go up against the Niners. That is a harsh and fierce rivalry, and they will hand it to San Francisco. Now we're going to get to the defense. We're going to talk about Nick Bosa. Where the hell has he been? And what the hell happened to the reigning defensive player of the year? We're going to talk about Brock Purdy. And we're going to talk about if the San Francisco 49ers have to make a trade now just to change the vibes. Because right now the vibes are bad. Philadelphia Eagles just won another hard-fought game. They are battle-tested. They are mentally tough. And anytime this football team has to face any type of tough environment, they crater and they crumble. First, though... Our post-game show is presented by Prize Picks. You can get up to a $100 deposit match at prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Use the code CLNS for that deposit match to hit. What that means is you put in $100, you get $100 back. This is the largest independently run daily fantasy sports app in North America. You pick two plus players. You choose more or less on their projected stat lines. And here were my picks today. I hit on two of them. Brandon Ayuk, more than five catches. Evan McPherson, the Bengals kicker, more than five and a half kicking points. I did not hit on Brock Purdy. More than one and a half passing, rushing, and receiving touchdowns total. Had an opportunity to pile up some touchdowns in this football game, but the bad interceptions were certainly costly. Going back to my rant here. This defense is trash. This defense sucks. San Francisco, despite not playing well offensively, and I hope that Kyle Shanahan takes some accountability as the head coach of this team for this offense failing to get past 20 points in the last three games because he looks like no offensive wizard, right? But this defense, after the Niners and two bad Brock Purdy interceptions, they cut this to a one-score game. There were eight minutes left on the clock. And what did the Niners defense proceed to do? They allowed the Cincinnati Bengals to go right down the field and score another touchdown to make this a two-touchdown deficit. And the game was over. And Joe Mixon bounced that run to the outside. Nick Bosa f just flailing at his legs. And he had... He had the reaction of missing the tackle in the backfield. He looked and saw that nobody else was there for security, and he's like, where is everybody? There's nobody at that second level to tackle Joe Mixon. You are the reigning defensive player of the year. You are the highest paid non-quarterback in the history of football. You held out all of training camp and the preseason up until damn near the start of the season to land that contract. And that contract for Nick Bosa has been a massive swing and a mess. I was willing to defend him the first couple of weeks of the season, right? No longer defending Nick Bosa. Can't get to the quarterback. Can't finish once he gets to the quarterback. He had a couple of opportunities to bring down Joe Burrow for a sack in this football game. He failed to do that. And against the run, how many tackles did he miss in the backfield? And going back to this defense for San Francisco, is it getting to a point where the Niners and the players don't like Steve Wilkes, so they're not responding to him well? They don't like the scheme, so that they're just giving up? The scheme is bad. Opposing offenses are automatic on third downs. They're automatic on some of these big plays that can change a game. Splash plays left and right. 400 yards of total offense, six and a half yards per play. Joe Burrow at one point went on a run where he completed, what, 19, 20 passes in a row? That should never happen against a defense like this. And San Francisco's run defense continues to be a massive problem. 27 carries, 134 yards, and five yards per carry for the Bengals. 
That's a scheme problem. That's a defensive problem. That's a personnel problem. It's an execution problem. The Niners are so soft right now that they can't tackle anybody. So do you have to fire Steve Wilkes just to get people in line? Do you have to fire Steve Wilkes to get people motivated? I understand that his scheme might not be for everybody, but at some point, the players have to execute. And right now, they're not. And some of that is probably due on Steve Wilkes. Steve Wilkes, light a fire under your defense and stop sitting with air conditioning in the booth. Get on the sideline and call some defensive plays. Where are you? You've done it before. Now you want to sit all pretty in the booth, watch down on the defense. What, does it allow you to see the game a little bit better? Yeah, maybe that's the case. Maybe the Niners need a presence on the sideline to chew them out, to get the message across, because right now it's not happening. So during this bye week, you better make some changes. So that's my rant on the defense. Bosa, what the fuck? You've been terrible. He's in the witness protection program. He can't make simple plays. It's embarrassing. If I were to go to my bosses here at Chat Sports and I were to say, I want X amount of dollars, and they gave it to me, and they said, we'll give it to you, but this is performance-based, and I didn't show up, and this channel failed, and I didn't do my job, that's not a good look on me. It's not a good look on Nick Bosa. And for him to have the gusto to say after that Vikings game, you know, usually we've been a four-man rushing team, but now we're blitzing a lot. I don't know. Whether you're blitzing or it's a four-man rush, this is what I do know about Nick Bosa. You're not getting to the quarterback. As for Brock Purdy, look, we've seen that this is a roller coaster ride with Brock Purdy at times. During that 5-0 and start, he was top five in turnover-worthy throws. I said, look, he's playing really well right now. I still believe in him. The improv improvisational plays, the plays out of structure, some of the throws downfield today, the accuracy, the touch, the anticipation, the running ability today, really impressive, right? 21 to 30, 324 yards, had a fumble, had two picks. It's a roller coaster ride. And at some point, I told you that those turnover worthy plays that were not interceptions were going to go against him, and the luck was going to turn around. That luck has turned around, and he's now thrown five picks in the last three games. And I see some people saying start Sam Darnold against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Sam Darnold has started 55 games in his career. He's thrown 55 interceptions. If there's anything that you have to do, you have to continue to ride with your young quarterback who's going through a rough patch to see if he can come out of it. But the last three games, he has made some Iowa State type of mistakes. And those mistakes can't happen. Again, if you want to go glass half full, at least those mistakes are happening now and not later. At least the Niners are struggling now and not later. I've been the host of this channel for now my third Niner season. I remember the 3-5 and five start in 2021. I remember the 3-4 and four start last year. I had a lot of the same reactions then that I'm having right now. A lot of the fans had the same reactions then that you're having now. You deserve to feel this way. Can the Niners turn it around? They've done it the last two years. They have all the talent in the world. They have one of the most talented teams in football. But I'll tell you what, if they were to face a Seattle, they were to face a Philadelphia Eagles team, if they were to play the Dallas Cowboys again, I have no confidence that this team can respond to adversity because they haven't been able to do that. And part of the reason why this Niners team stinks and why they're soft is because they didn't invest in the offensive line all offseason. All of you are very smart fans. That's why I like hosting this channel. I love it. It's a blessing. All offseason, we collectively as a group got to get a right tackle if you let Mike McGlinchey go. Got to think about upgrading at right guard. If there's a good center out there, I understand Jake Brendel was a Pro Bowl alternate. You got to think about making a change there. Last three games against some physical defensive fronts. This is a Niners team that can't pass protect. They struggle to block in the run game. Brock Purdy has been under pressure, under siege. You can set the tone at the line of scrimmage defensively and offensively. And you can send a message to your opponent that, hey, 
Maybe if we're struggling a little bit, we're at least going to beat your ass and beat you down at the point of attack. And in that five-game winning streak to start the year, San Francisco was taking the will out of teams. They were beating them up throughout the course of a 60-minute game. Looks as though, though, then they were front runners because now when they receive some pushback, they've pissed down their legs, and it's unacceptable. So make sure you subscribe to the show. We are closing in on 100,000 subscribers. If the Niners actually showed up today, like the fans did at Levi Stadium, we would have gotten to 100,000 subscribers during our watch party. We'll get there soon, though. Hit that sub button. We're going to continue to cover this football team every day. Appreciate all of you for watching. And let me know what you think about this team down in the chat. And do not back down.